What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today I've built a whole new track without telling anybody. It was a 10 hour project at least I would say and it's just because of the location but we're going to go deliver cordwood to the smelter down an incredibly steep line. So we've got the Heisler loaded up with our six empty cordwood cars and we're gonna head over to the logging camp to pick up some cordwood and then get going. So what I did is I built a line directly from the logging camp to the smelter, skipping the entire sawmill. I know this has been done a lot before. I think Dapper did one as well as Cosmo. And it's basically a line through that sneaky, sneaky back valley at the top of the map. If we look here at the very top of the map between the sawmill and the smelter, there's a little valley there and it's a sneaky valley. But in order to get up there, it's kind of crazy. First, you have to climb at 3% from the logging camp all the way up to this ridge. And then once you clear the ridge, it has to go down at 10% all the way to the smelter. Or you could do like a bunch of switchbacks or loops or whatever to go down at a shallower angle. But I decided, screw it, we're gonna make a 10% track. And the reason why is it might work actually perfect for this Heisler train. So the Heisler pulls 316,449 pounds up 3%. Loaded with six cordwood cars, we're going to be at 308,202 pounds, which is a difference of 8,240 pounds. So we could actually theoretically make it up the 3% fully loaded with 8,000 pounds to spare, which is perfect. Now, coming back up the 10% line is going to be a whole different story. Coming back up the 10%, the Heiser can only pull 54,760 pounds, and our empties are going to be 54,234 pounds, so only a difference of 526. So theoretically, in both directions, this is a loaded train. This train has barely any clearance, but we're going to take it to the smelter and back because I really want to see if we can make it up the 10% run with, uh, you know, with this train. Now, it took me a long time to build this route, and the main reason is just the location of it is kind of difficult to build in. It's literally built on the edge of a sheer cliff, pretty much. So it's very, very difficult to build there. And of course, you can't fly. So I spent a lot of time falling down the cliff and having to build my way back up with foundation and all that sort of thing. But I'm really, really happy with the run. The 10% is very, very straight. I tried to keep it as straight as possible. Only a few very shallow curves and all the uh, track fits the perfect straight line railco standard, I feel. It's just extremely clean. It's straight track, it's nice. And even the line from the logging camp, the 3% climb up is really, really smooth in my opinion. So. We're going to try this train, and I'm hoping it's going to be the new way to deliver cordwood to the smelter. That way we can deliver cordwood to the smelter without even having to use the sawmill track. We can just do our own thing, ignore everybody else, and it should be perfect. There's a Y at the logging camp, and then at the smelter there's like a kind of intuitive sort of curve off section and I had to use a crisscross for the first time. It was a little bit weird to be honest because the cross tracks are only at perfect 90s so I would have liked a cross track that was at like 45 degrees or something. It would have made my life a lot easier but you'll see when we get there it's a pretty sweet track and actually if we look here we might be able to I oh no we can't see it's kind of hidden in the tree line here but the track goes right along the edge of this valley and it's just, it's gonna be fantastic. You guys are gonna see, I'm really, really a big fan of this run. I was building it with the Eureka with a caboose. Now the Eureka itself can't go up 10%. It can't even go up 9%. At 9%, it has negative pulling capacity. And at 10%, same thing, also a negative pulling capacity. It's, uh, it's just not a powerful engine. Holy cow, this thing almost wanted to fall off the tracks. But anyway, yeah, the Eureka couldn't make it up it, but going down was no problem, obviously. But I had the brakes at 100% with a caboose, and the Eureka was picking up speed on the 10% run. It was actually insane. Uh, here we're gonna go left. We don't have to. There is a Y we could flip around. But we're just gonna... Is that gonna let me? Perfect. But yeah, we gotta go left here initially. We could, of course, just, you know, use the Y. But it's just easier if we go left right away. And then that way we're lined up to go get the cordwood and then go straight out on the line. Now, I haven't run this line with the Heisler yet. I'm very curious to see what happens. Like I said, it's going to be a loaded train in both directions. So it's going to be full speed with the Heisler. And my only concern really is kind of something Dapper pointed out, which is wheel slip going up the 10% empty. We're going to be pulling only 54,000 pounds, which isn't a lot, but we're probably going to get a ton of wheel slip um, just because we're going to be like full regging the Heisler on, you know, a very, very steep hill. 10% is the steepest hill 
you can lay foundation and bridges at in this game. You could theoretically like lay track at a higher percentage if you just, you know, laid it on the ground itself because you can't just put track like, you know, we could just take a rail and just do something ridiculous. Oh, won't even let me place it there. But, you know, we could do something ridiculous like place it off a, a bridge and then come down or like step the foundation, for example. Uh, yeah, I can't place apparently track on buildings, but you get the idea. If you build the track without a foundation, you could actually just have it at whatever angle you want. But the foundation itself, bridges and stuff, 10% is the maximum. So that's what we've got, and uh, it's going to be quite an exciting ride. I'm excited to see what happens going down. I think going down, we're probably going to need a 100% brake on the back few cars at least, plus the engine itself. Um, because, you know, this is going to be like a... 400,000 pound train going down a hill so yeah it it's gonna be heavy but anyway let's load this up and then we'll get going down the track and I'm so excited you have no idea this has been such a huge project it's taken so long and I'm just happy to finally actually test it and hopefully this will be the new and effective way to deliver cordwood I think it's gonna be great it's the only time I'm ever gonna make a 10% run because they are insane. It's like the steepest thing I've ever seen in my life and it's very, very long 10%. I feel like it would not be done 10% for this long um, in, the, in the real industry, but I had to do it at least once just because, you know, it, it's the steepest line of the game. It's gonna be awesome. All right, perfect. The last two cars are loaded. Let's get out of here. Now, it's been a while since we've been at the logging camp, but you might notice that this is a much wider turn now. I had to do this for two reasons. One was to accommodate this Y that's here and make the switches actually work. But the other is that curve before wasn't really Eureka safe. I found that Eureka would derail if I was going full reg around that corner. So I made it much more gradual. It's still a relatively tight turn, uh, but it is more gradual and allows us to support this Y rather nicely and you can see here we go our line to the left which goes out to the cordwood delivery and then of course we could loop back to the right go back through the lung camp and on the main line if we were doing sawmill stuff but this is also a really really nice line because now there's way less switches there's going to be no switches between here and the smelter so you can see we come out of the logging camp we go down a little bit of a hill here this wasn't really intentional i could have kept this level i guess to be honest um, but you know, it just gives you a little bit of chance to build up speed. We're gonna go 100% reg right away because we are climbing with only 8,000 pounds of clearance at 100% reg. Uh, this is a heavy train, believe it or not. It's 300,000 something pounds, 316,000 pounds, so, or 308,000 pounds. Still, it's, it's a heavy, heavy train. We shouldn't bog down though. We have 8,000 pounds of clearance. Like I said, this is 3% and I laid the bridges proper at 3%. So I would set the bridge up and then adjust the height afterwards for the whole bridge. And you can actually see it does change the spline height a little bit. It does make it a little shallower. So it's a proper 3% bridge, not a too steep 3%. And you can see nice, smooth, gradual turns. And of course the wooden rail deck on top of the metal, because apparently that is the legitimate way to make a bridge. But we basically just hug this mountain for a while. We just keep climbing. You can see the sawmill over there. So we don't even have to go through that valley anymore. That's the way we would be going. We're now going way over here. And you can actually see where we're going to clear the ridge. But luckily there's no bogging on the Heisler at all. It seems to be perfect, to be honest, on this stuff. I mean, I'm only really worried about coming back up the 10%. It is, 10% is gnarly. It looks so scary when you're about to go over the hill. But even this S-Bed, like, I love how smooth these curves are. It took me way too long to build this track. I was honestly just so crazy specific about every individual piece of it. I tried to make it follow the curves, but then also have that smooth track feel. And honestly, this is, like, the best track I've ever made in my entire time playing this game. It gets a little messy at the smelter. You'll see what I'm talking about. It is, it is fine. It's functional. And like I said, there is a crossover piece. But because the crossover piece is 90, there is some weird, like, S-Bed stuff going on to make it work. Not really, you know, unrealistic. The curves are kind of big, but if I had a 45 degree cross or something, or I could cross the track at custom angles, I would definitely fix that up. But climbing this, no problem. Honestly, this is fantastic. 3% easy climb. We'll get up there. The way back though, only 500 pounds of clearance. It means we should still be able to climb it. No problem. Oh God, we should have slowed down for that corner. See that corner is a little bit, a little bit squirrely. I might need to clean that up a little bit. Anyway, we're at the top. This is the top of the ridge. This is just a 1% climb-ish. Gives you a bit of a chance to slow down. And this one piece is the only flat piece in this entire section. Right there. We are crossing the crest of the hill. Um, so... 
This is going down at 3% initially, and then you can basically see the doom drop-off point. So we're going to hit the break on this guy uh, at 100% to start. Let's go to the back real quick. Oh god, I can't get up on these. Are you serious? Come on, there we go. Okay, so let's get to the back. And we're going to actually set the brakes on these back two cars to 100%. And then we're going to remove the Heisler brakes and drag them forward. This is probably not proper railway practice, but I don't really care at this point. Can I? I can't get up. These are very difficult cars to be brake man on. You can't actually jump onto the load from the base of the car. Anyway, we got the back two cars braked. 100% zero. It's not going to pull it, so that's good. Let's give it some reg so we can actually pull it. Once we get onto the 10%, it's going to just drag. So we're dragging two cars. I should probably have a proper brake man for this. But it's fine. We'll do it solo. And then I think with the back two cars plus the Heisler's brakes, we should be fine. So this is 3% down right now. You can kind of tell. That's a little 6% joiner just because, you know, the drop from 3 to 10 is nuts. And then after this, now it's 10. And it's just 10 the whole way down. And this is this is so steep. Oh, my God. Like, maybe we should make it down. We're just going to go faster and faster. And fa okay, we're already picking up speed. Yeah, we are. Okay, let's get some brake. Like I said, with the Eureka, 100% brake was still picking up speed. It had to... Oh, God. We're still... Oh, that's 100% brake, and we're picking up speed. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Slam that. And we're going to fall off. Okay. Slam that. That's four cars braked. Are we still picking up speed? I honestly can't tell. I think, I think we're good. Okay, we're, we're slowing down. Perfect. So it's four cars plus the Heisler. These are really bad cars to deal with, too. Oh, my goodness. All right. So then we can modulate the Heisler brakes. That's too much. Got to make sure we maintain brake pressure. This is nuts. This is insane. That's literally like one, two, the front two cars, these back two cars, only the middle two are unbraked. And it's still just squealing down this hill. I can't, Man, the brakes would be so hot after you got to the bottom of this hill. Luckily, that's pretty much it. Because it's a 10% hill, it's not very long. I mean, it is long. It's all the way from here. But basically, we come around this corner. We come down here. And then once we hit this bridge, you can see it already starts to shallow off. This bridge is only 8%. And then it goes down to, you know, 3%, 4%, whatever. And then down to the smelter. But you can see it's super quick run. So now we can actually go and remove these brakes. Oh, my goodness. It's good to know, though, how many brakes we need. So it's four to get this thing to go. We'll remove those. We're going to just pick up a little of the speed. No problem. Just hang on the edge of this car. Get to the back here. Remove the brakes on this guy. Oh, you have no brakes. Oh, back one more car. That's right. There we go. We'll get the brakes off this guy. Perfect. Should be on the 8% section now. We are. All right. We'll take off the last set of brakes and just kind of speed tail it out of the bottom. There we go. Perfect. Oh, God. I can't get over this. All right. Whatever. I'm just going to sneak along the side. There we go. Perfect. The Heiser still got its brakes on. Now we're on to the 3% downhill. Oh, God. Okay. Well, there goes our train. Luckily, it doesn't matter. We're on the 3%. And now we're pulling in to the smelter. Amazing. It's very, very quick. Like I said, it's a super quick run, but you could do this. If we did this at 3%, we would need more than three times the length of track, right? So we're going at 10%, which means we can come down that crazy hill. Like, you can see how steep that looks, but it's super awesome that we can actually have a run like that. That actually went a lot smoother than I thought. So now here we go left at this switch, and this is going to kind of pull us into the smelter. And you can see I did a redesign completely of the smelter as well. Not like anything too crazy. I just had to change some of the curves of the loop. Um, it looks pretty much the same, honestly, unless you go back to, like, an old video. You won't tell too much of the difference, but I pretty much had to lay most of the track around here just to get this cross piece to work, because what I want to do is come in here at an angle and then cut across this line here directly in front of us at an angle to loop back in, but unfortunately I couldn't do that. So in order to make the 90-degree cross work, you can see I had to go all the way over here and then come back around, which, I mean, now we could probably honestly just build a Y here no because you still need the line to come through so we need a triple switch if we had a triple switch we could build this as a y but honestly you don't ever need to come back so we're just gonna loop through though it's a pretty easy thing here and then we have to uh let's see we have to either unload our back three first and then drop them off or drop them off and then reload them oh we gotta get that switch 
Look at that, a functional cross piece. Amazing. Never done that before. That's so cool. I can't imagine they were super common in railroads, especially not on main lines, just because, you know, it's it's kind of a safety thing. But I'm sure in yards there were a lot of cross pieces, but to be honest, I don't actually know. I've never really seen one of those in real life. But same thing as before, we've only got a reverse lane here for this area. I probably need to extend that track back. I relayed this track, um, but yeah, I probably need to extend that back. It's got to fit three. Oh no, we'll still fit three cars. We'll be okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to live unhitch this. We'll slam the brakes on this back guy and unhitch that. There we go. So you slow down. Perfect. Is that enough? Perfect. And we just got to coast past this switch, back these three in, and then pick up the rest of our train. And back it in. This is perfect. This should get the uh, smelter reproducing again. We were basically full on... Well, not... We have a lot of iron delivered here, but I haven't delivered cordwood in forever. I think since the very beginning, honestly. So that was the main reason why I just wanted to have some sort of a line to start delivering the cordwood again and actually get this thing producing iron because then I want to work on connecting the other three industries. I mean, I literally spent 10 hours uh, probably, I probably should have recorded it because then you guys could have seen the process and stuff, but I just wanted to like build this line and, you know, show you guys some actually driving of it because I figured building a line, it's like, you know, it, it takes a while, it's straight and all that and I had to path find it and all that nonsense, but at the end of the day, it's just really exciting to see how crazy a 10% hill is and I'm super excited to go up it. I couldn't even go up with Eureka. I tried. It just slides out and goes back down. So I'm curious to see if the Heisler can actually do it with only 500 pounds of extra pulling. But it is a gradual build into it. That 8% hill should give us some time to build up some speed. And, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll help. I don't really know, to be honest. So let's unload all this nonsense. Get the smelter producing. That's perfect. The cordwood loaded up. We should still have like 100 iron, I think. 106 iron, there you go. Yeah, so we're going good there, perfect. And then we need to unhitch this like that. There we go, put a hitch on that. And we will pull that forward, remove the hitch on this guy. Excellent. I will say the process for unloading cordwood is actually like the longest so far, simply just because we can't put a you know a straight through loop there unless we build it up i know you can put a bridge like above the iron and just drop it off the bridge but you know for the sake of realism you can't exactly put an easy way to access that stuff that being said though i think this new 10 percent line is actually going to help just a whole ton in terms of speeding up the cordwood deliveries before we have to go through the sawmill and flick like 16 million switches and then you got to come down here and hit the smelter Y, flick those switches. And it's a long path to get all the way from the logging camp to the smelter in the original way. But this way is definitely a shortcut. But uh, of course, there's only going to be like two trains that can actually do it. We could theoretically do it with the Climax with a few more things. But even at 10%, the Climax only pulls 100,000 pounds. So there's not very many big trains you'd be able to put up that, uh, up that crazy hill. But I mean, theoretically, this one should do it. So I, I'm... We're going to take it back. I hope we make it all the way back to the logging camp. If not, we'll just, you know, double the hill, I guess. But there we go. Flick that switch over. I'm going to flick this one, too. This is our exit line. So there's no Y here. It, they both kind of come in and leave at the same loop. So the intent being, of course, it is a very much a purpose-built line for a Heisler with six cordwood cars. And, of course, six cordwood cars work simply because you can only unload three at a time. So... It's kind of the perfect setup, to be honest. We could also just take a, a less powerful train with only three cordwood cars. Um, but even the Class 70, up 10%, only pulls 23,800 pounds. So it, it wouldn't be able to pull only three cordwood cars. It could do two, but it would fail trying to do three. So that would be kind of... Actually, would it fail at three? Because they're... Yeah, three is 27,000 pounds. Yeah, it would, it would be too heavy. 4,000 pounds overweight. So you wouldn't be able to make it up the hill. I think it's going to work. I think, it, I think it'll be fine. I think we'll make it. We don't have that much clearance and weight, but I don't think that's going to matter because the track is so straight. Like, we're going to be basically running the numbers perfectly. Unload all that. Cordwood. Excellent. Excellent. How much money do we have now? Uh, that's not the one. $3,300. Okay. Got to make more. I'll probably do a few more cordwood deliveries at some point here just to, you know, get this industry still going. We can store up to 100 cordwood. We're already going to chew through all this. We still have some iron. Although we do have more iron we could deliver as well. 
maybe uh, get a couple more iron cars and do like a full 100 iron with the Cook Mogul. Because I know that's a loaded train. The Cook Mogul is kind of crazy for that. The weight is just on the limit. But either way, let's see what happens. We're going to go up a 10% line. Which I didn't think I'd ever do, but apparently it's going to happen. Let's just slow down through this curve just to make sure we don't derail. But yeah, we're going to go up 10% with 6 cars. This looks really light. But as soon as we get on that hill, it's going to be a whole different story. Nice and slow through here. This seems like a really stupid idea. It looks like a ski hill, honestly. When I look at it from a distance... Oh, that switch needs to be flicked. But yeah, when I look at it from here up the valley, it looks like a ski hill. Look, look at that. It's This is like 6% and then 8% and then just death from there on up. But I mean, it's short. It is a super, super short run. And it's probably the shortest way... Well, it is definitely the shortest way you could get from the bottom to the top. But here we go. I made sure to put a nice big run-up area, of course. So once you get through this switch, you can just accelerate like mad. You can also use it as a braking zone as well. So when you're coming into this switch, you're not coming in at a million miles an hour. You know, you can slow down down this. But it's really just a big acceleration zone. I mean, we're already up to full speed. But, you know, if we were using a different engine or if we had more weight or whatever... You know, you can accelerate and then gradually build in to the steep hill. So, that's like 0%. This is 3% on this first hill. And then that little curve is a 6% curve. And then it's 8% and then 10%. Just nuts. So obviously, we're going to be no problem here. We're still way under towing capacity. Same thing here. 6%. 8%. No issues. We gotta be careful with the sander if we get wheel slip. We're still moving. This is insane. This is so cool. Oh, what a climb. We're not even at the 10% yet. Look at how steep that looks. That is not even the max steepness. You can even tell. Look, look at the difference. Boom, 10%. That's nuts. Now we're just, we're just cruising. All right, we're 500 pounds. And it, it isn't bogging down. I mean, it shouldn't. 526 pounds. Let's go. That's like less than 1%. That is a less than 1% load clearance. We're totally going to bog on one of these corners. Probably this top one is a 10% turn, but whatever. Holy cow, this is nuts. That's so cool. I can't believe it does it. This is so amazing. If we pulled the pin, those cars would accelerate so fast in the opposite direction, it would be silly. Oh. Okay, no, we're good. I thought I lost speed there, but I guess not. This is amazing. It's actually going to make it. Holy cow. Flawless. The math works flawlessly. That's all. That's the only proof of this. Here, we might lose a little bit of speed, but it doesn't matter. As soon as we get around this corner and we hit that piece, then it's like 3% again. 6 and then 3 Even then, we didn't really lose any speed on that corner. That is so crazy. We just went up a 10% hill. <laughs> with a 6 car train. That is so awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is this is definitely how I'm going to deliver Corbin from now on. To be honest, what I think I should do is have the Heisler, and I'm probably going to leave it there for now, but have the Heisler parked at the logging camp. We should build like a little switch off section for the Heisler at the logging camp. Something that has, you know, a, uh, a water tower and a fuel depot at the logging camp so we can just refuel, you know, the Heisler, no problem. It'd be pretty easy to deliver fuel there. You just put it on the other side of the track, you load a cordwood car, unload it into the camp, boom, done, fuel. And then we could put a little switch off and have the Heisler parked there with its own little cordwood train. And that's what we could use it for. Fill it up with cordwood, bring it up here. Because this is very much like a perfect Heisler run. Six car, Heisler train. Probably should have some brake going down this. Maybe I'll buy a Heisler specifically for the lumber camp. Give it like a cool lumberjack name. Like Jim. Jim the Lumberjack. I don't I don't know. I honestly I don't know what's it. Bill? What's a good lumberjack name? Cut trees much? You guys might have noticed I didn't really cut the trees very far back. I did cut the trees that were interfering with the track, but I kinda left most of them. I wanted to make this kind of like a secret sneaky path. Like, you know, it's hard to see from everywhere else. It's just sort of hidden. And undetectable. But yeah, that's amazing. Look at that. Flawless execution. 
I thought we were gonna bog out on the on the 10%. When I was making this, I thought there's no way. Look at that. We even that little uphill there that acts as like a little bit of a speed boost when you're going down. It slows you down just enough when you're coming down from a glide. That's so amazing. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think the switch off for this, we'll just have to build something that like switches off over here. And maybe just has a round table on it. So you just like pull in and twist the engine around and bring it out. I don't really want to necessarily have to build a whole other loop just for a single, you know, a single train with six cars. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, that was amazing. I can't believe that worked. I want to deliver more cordwood. Maybe I'll do that in another episode where I build up the area here for the Heisler and then do another cordwood delivery. Uh, even though y'all have already seen it before. I'm definitely going to have to connect the last three industries now. We've got the smelter working again, which means we'll have iron products soon, which we can, of course, deliver to the iron works. I don't really know how much iron the iron works takes, but I think that's the next place to go. And then we'll go to the refinery and the oil field all pretty much right after each other because it shouldn't be too much track once we've gotten to one of them. We honestly could probably go straight from the freight depot to the oil field first and then just make one continuous track that loops across all three. But either way, let me know what you guys think. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see y'all next time.